Things Beautiful Lifestyle TV. We are your hosts, Anna and Cynthia, your favorite mother-daughter duo. And here we are again, welcoming you back to our world of beautiful living. All Things Beautiful is noted for its vineyard tours, wine tasting, and pairing curations. From private home sellers to beautiful wine rooms like this, to locations around the world. We are so excited to talk the art of wine and fat boards. Mom, are you ready? Let's go. go. So AJ, please tell me, what exactly was your inspiration for becoming a sommelier? Um, you know, it was really food that got me started. I uh, was a server uh, back in the day. And I found that the perfect meal can only be enhanced by having a wonderful glass of wine. Right. And so that's what really got me into it, uh, was just that passion of food and how it can really be enhanced with the wine. That's awesome. So I'm just looking around at this beautiful space, and I really need our audience to understand what it feels like to be a member of a wine room. It just I mean, it really looks so exclusive, AJ. This is amazing. What does it mean to be a member of a wine room? Really, it's about family. You know, we want to bring people together that share a passion, that passion for wine. And we want to bring them together so that way they can experience it together. Um, you know, we'll have all different bottles opened up, and that way you get the opportunity to experience different wines and, uh, you know, maybe something that you've never had before or maybe something you've been looking forward to trying. My burning question is, is it true that there's poor quality wine? Is, would you say that there's truly a thing as a wine that is of poor quality? Um, the most important thing that I would say is that the only good wine is the wine that you like. And so if you enjoy it, it's not my place to say that it's good or not good. Uh, it's my place to help you find wines that are similar to the wines that you like. And so, I, you know, just as everyone has a favorite color, uh, there's wines that some people will enjoy and some wines that people will not enjoy. Um, but really, it's all about finding that bottle that you do like. I like that. I do. I do. I like that answer. So, you know, when I think about wines, I think about wines that I have just sitting in my refrigerator, but then I think of expensive wine. What is the most expensive wine that you've ever tasted? Um, probably the most expensive bottle of wine I've had uh, would be the 1947 Cheval Blanc. Mm -hmm. uh, it's allegedly the number one wine ever produced. Uh, so I had that at a dinner, and uh, I gotta say, even though it you know, had almost 50 some odd years on it. It was absolutely delightful. So, just to piggyback on that, when we talk about years and we talk about vintage, give us a little background on what, on what that means. Um, the vintage is obviously the year that the wine was produced, right? And it's very, very important. Uh, you have some places like California where it's just beautiful every single year. Uh, but even within those specific years, you have um, a huge difference. Uh, I mean, what was the rainfall? How hot or cold was it? And so that's what gives the unique personality to every single bottle, is that vintage. I mean, that's why you put it on the label and uh, you know, it's on every single bottle that you drink. That's really good to know. Really good to know. Lastly, I kind of want to get into food, wine, when, when you think of food and wine, what do you feel is like your favorite meal to pair your favorite bottle of wine with? You know, I would say wine makes just about all food better. Mm -hmm. um, but my personal favorite would probably be just a nice glass of champagne with some french fries. Oh, You get wow. the nice greasiness and the salt from the french fry with the crispness of the champagne. Uh, one of my absolute favorites, for sure. I Sounds never good. would have thought about that. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Awesome. I like that. So, let's talk a little bit about fountain boards. Yes. 
Sound boards, grace tables. We have kind of fallen in love with the idea of it. Uh, we literally consider it an edible experience. So today we have a mini fount board here from Fount Board and Tables, also located in Dallas, Texas. And AJ, we just want to know, how would you pair such a wonderful presentation uh, with wine? You'll find that when you're doing wine pairings in general, there's a couple of really easy rules. Typically you want to match weight to weight uh, and power to power. So if you have something that's a little bit lighter, like the Brie here, you want a little bit of a lighter style wine, something that's a little bit crisper, nice Pinot Grigio or maybe a nice Sancerre. Uh, when you move into a little bit more pungent cheese, something like the Gouda, uh, you want to have a more powerful style of wine. So then you can go ahead and pair it with a nice Bordeaux uh, or a little bit of a bigger style California Cabernet. One of my personal favorite pairings is actually a beautiful Sauterne. You'll find that if you take a bite of the cheese and a sip of the Sauterne, it turns into cheesecake. Or a bite of the fruit, a sip of the Sauterne, and you have a cherry pie. One of my absolute favorite things. This is just another element to add to your lifestyle of beautiful living. AJ, we thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you so One much. last toast, guys. One last toast. To beautiful living. To beautiful, beautiful living. living.